So you've seen spark gap coils on this channel. You've seen vacuum tube coils on this channel. Now it's time to get into the other big category of Tesla coils, solid state Tesla coils, which use high power transistors to control the switching. These guys created the driver circuit design and have all built their own coils. So when Zach from Lab Coats asked if I wanted to join this collab and build my own coil around this driver circuit design, I was like, uh, yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. I want a small to medium sized coil that's relatively compact but still has really good output relative to its size. Small coils usually have higher resonant frequencies though, and this driver circuit can only handle coils under 400 kilohertz. So for a small coil, gotta keep the resonant frequency low by using a relatively large number of turns and a reasonably large sized top load. So, as per my calculations, I'm going with a four and a half inch diameter coil with about a thousand turns of 30 gauge wire, which results in a coil that's about 12 inches tall, and a top load that's about 10 inches in overall diameter and two and a half inches in cross section diameter. And for those of you who don't use backwards caveman units like we do here in Freedom Land, here's all the conversions for those in centimeters. Anyway, this results in the coil with a resonant frequency of about 200 kilohertz, which is well within the operating range of this driver circuit. All right, enough talk. Let's build it. So I got to thinking, wouldn't it be nice to 3D print something to mount the primary coil? It's always kind of a pain to make by hand. And then I thought, well, if I'm 3D printing that, then I might as well 3D print some way to mount the circuit board too, right? Then one thing led to another, and I guess I got a little carried away because uh, now we're 3D printing the whole damn thing. I think it's gonna look pretty sick though. Well, it works okay. 
I think this coil can do a lot better though. I notice it starts to cut out as I turn the voltage of the variac up. So this circuit uses antenna feedback. So what I'm thinking is the antenna is too long and too close to the secondary coil, meaning that the feedback signal is too strong. That's why it cuts out as I turn the voltage up. Now it's too short. Yeah, that's good. The sparks are still not as big as I was hoping for. Thinking the reason for that is the impedance of my primary is too high, and it's limiting the amount of current and therefore the amount of power going through the coil. I can reduce the impedance by reducing the number of turns on the primary. However, this comes at the expense of also reducing the magnetic coupling between the primary and the secondary. But I designed this mount to allow me to adjust the height of the primary so that I can adjust the coupling. Raising it means higher coupling, and lowering it means reducing the coupling. Getting the coupling right is actually a really crucial part of designing good Tesla coils. If you're interested in learning more about this, go check out my featured segment in Labcoat's video about his coil based on this driver. much better. Honestly, this was pretty easy to get working. All I had to do was build a coil around this driver circuit design, which these guys had already figured out before I even got involved. So, for how the circuit works, I'll let Zach from Labcoats go over the design. So, you wonder how the circuit works? Well, it's quite simple really. You just get two coils, have the smaller primary coil resonate the same frequency that the secondary likes to resonate at, and boom, test the coil. Thank you for watching Coil Labs. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Well, kind of. Our circuit was derived from the Low Motions SSTC2, which was in turn derived from Steve Ward's Mini SSTC. A number of other YouTubers also helped contribute to our circuit's design. For instance, PowerMax helped with the overall layout, and Brian from Side2HD brought the need for an inrush current limiter. Anyway, the main difference between our circuit and the Low Notion circuit is the absence of a few annoying extra components. We also swapped out the at tiny interrupter with the 555 timer based one, since nobody wants to program a microcontroller. Anyway, here's how it works. First, an antenna near the coil picks up its signal and passes it by a diode clipping circuit, a resistor and capacitor, and a 74HC14 Schmidt trigger, which converts the somewhat sloppy signal into a more functional square wave that matches the resonant frequency. The new square wave signal is then pumped into the UCC27425 gate driver IC, where it is amplified. Conveniently, our gate driver chip also has something called an enable pin, which is basically like its on and off switch. If we feed the signal from our interrupter to the enable pins, we can control the Tesla coil's pulse duration and frequency, and therefore the spark appearance. By the way, all this low voltage circuitry is powered by a few simple voltage regulators which take any DC voltage from 14 to 24 volts and adjust it to fit the circuit's needs. Now the resulting interrupted signal from our gate driver circuit is finally sent to a small device known as a gate drive transformer, or GDT. The GDT can easily be made by wrapping two 12 turn coils and one 8 turn coil onto a suitable ferrite core. If properly assembled, the GDT converts the 12 volt signal from our driver circuit into two 18 volt signals, which are optimal for switching our transistors. If we phase the GDT correctly, it will cause the transistors to switch the 340 volts DC from our power supply across the primary coil at the resonant frequency. And since the resonant frequency is detected by the drive circuit, we can basically stick any secondary coil we want in the primary coil's field and it will resonate almost perfectly, producing an incredibly powerful electrical discharge. Anyways, now back to your regularly scheduled program. The cool thing about this driver circuit is it's not super specific to any one design. You can use it for all kinds of different coils.
Thanks again to all these guys for inviting me to be a part of this collab. I had a lot of fun making this, and I hope you enjoyed it too. As always, Coilers, stay safe, don't electrocute yourself, and I'll see you all next time.